After July the 5th, 1948, every man, woman and child in Scotland comes within the care of the National Health Service. Under this new service, they will get, free of charge, medical, dental, optical and nursing care whenever these are needed. No longer will hospitals have to depend upon charity to help them fulfil their vital task. But, of course, donations will still be welcome. No longer will you be asked the embarrassing question, how much can you afford to pay? Whether you have a small family, or a large family, the cost will be the same. All the amenities of modern medical science are at your disposal. From the modest box of pills to the most expensive and up-to-date healing equipment. That, roughly, is what the new health service means to you. This service is not entirely new to Scotland, for as far back as 1913, an act was passed bringing an efficient medical, hospital and ambulance service to remote parts of Scotland. Hundreds of people living in the Highlands and Western Islands were without adequate medical attention. The few doctors available had hours of heartbreaking travel over land and water to reach a single patient. The cost of such journeys had to be borne by the doctor himself. And, in consequence, districts like these had few attractions for the average doctor. With the coming of a state subsidy for the medical services in these areas, more and more doctors were attracted. They could afford cars to help them to cover the vast distances. Instead of one patient per day, they could visit perhaps three or four. Specialists became available, and, in cases of emergency, air ambulances could be called to carry the patient to the great city hospitals on the mainland. So, in effect, for 30 years, remote Scotland has had the benefit of a health service differing in detail only from the present National Health Service introduced for the rest of Britain. Since 1941, the industrial workers of Scotland have benefited from what has been described as an advanced chapter of the National Health Service by the introduction of measures which permitted the emergency medical hospitals and specialist services to be placed at their disposal for preventive treatment, rehabilitation and convalescence. The new health service affects every man, woman and child in Scotland. Many feel that it means intrusion and interference in their personal medical affairs, the choice of where to have their babies, which doctor to have, taken out of their hands. Can I choose a hospital for my operation? Will I get free optical treatment? Will I get free dental treatment? Will private rooms in hospitals be abolished? Can I choose where to have my baby? Chief among the many apprehensive questions being asked is whether the choice of doctor will be denied. Many people, of course, will wish to retain their own family doctor. This you can do, but you can also make a change at any time. As always, your relations with your doctor will remain personal and confidential, and you should get onto a doctor's list as soon as possible. Specialist treatment is still available in your own home or at the hospital. If necessary, an ambulance will take you to hospital for free medical aid. All surgical operations are free of charge under the new scheme. Also, antenatal and postnatal advice and treatment will be available at clinics.
cod liver oil and fruit juices will be free. Vaccination for smallpox and immunization against diphtheria will still be done and mother should take advantage of this important service. Health visitors will call and give advice and help in homes where there are children or where there is sickness in the family. Free dental service will be provided when the present shortage of dentists is overcome. But the special priority service for young children and expectant and nursing mothers. Care of the eyes comes inside the scheme. And testing and treatment will be done by qualified doctors and opticians taking part in the health service. If spectacles are needed, they will be provided free and the choice of design will be left to the wearer. Doctors will tell the deaf where to go for testing and treatment. Hearing aids will be free of charge, but to begin with, the supply of these will be limited. The new health service is designed with the welfare and happiness of the people in mind. It offers an opportunity to achieve new standards of physical fitness and general well-being. The future of Scotland lies in the health and happiness of her children. The new health service will see to it that that future is guaranteed. <laughs>